Hi friends, host Eric and Rachel here, and we just got done watching the premiere of my typing session of Club ENTP. And I am struck in the astronaut though with lots of thoughts. It was very thought triggering. So in the premiere, Winterbird immediately said, this guy's an ENFP. A couple other people said equivalent things. Um, and I was able to see how in the typing session, for whatever reason, I got, I let myself get carried along some rapids that dragged us through the TI tests much more quickly than I should have allowed and I don't I'm left with with an inconclusive sense well I, I'm left with the same sense I was left with before talking with them but not while talking with them which is that guy's not an ENTP that's what my knowing function is saying in this case my intuition um, but it's bolstered now by more experience, I guess you'd say. But it's experience from watching that I didn't notice really while I'm talking to the guy. So this brings to mind for me that I got shifted there from a tool function usage that's more workaday into a tool function usage that's more comfortable or I guess you'd say in less conflict with my tertiary. So ideally I'd like to be both right and have us in agreement because then there's not any conflict and I don't have to correct anything and we can enjoy chatting, right? So Winterbird was not the only person there to express some initial, before we got to the TI questions, skepticism about the guy's type. And I found myself saying during the chat, well, I agree with you, Winterbird. If I were sitting in your seat right now, I'd say the same thing. Thinking the TI questions were going to vindicate my conclusion that he was an ENTP, only to discover that I had gotten frame-walked right through the thing. He, he basically seized control of the frame of the thing. And... What does that mean? Maybe nothing. He may be an ENTP who just... And what happened there was... It's possible to interpret that as his selfish FE out-selfished my more practiced selfish FE. That could be one explanation. And that's kind of what I chalked it up to there at the end when I was talking to Richard afterwards is that my FP is more polished because I've been doing YouTube for longer and it's, it's refined me as a person more. That's one possible explanation. Um, another possible explanation is that he was TI question avoidant and wanted to move through the thing as quickly as possible and so willfully seized control of the question asking so that he could move away from that in a way that didn't they didn't require me first to exhaustively finish the testing of it, right? And I approached it from a wrong perspective in the first place. I approached it from the perspective of, I'm going to give him some tough ones to see if he's an HP. What I should do to make sure he's an HP is not make sure he's an HP. I should make sure he's not an ENFP, which is to say I should throw a bunch of easy ones at him in succession and see how he does on them and give him like 10 of them and see what score he gets, you know? Easy ones like, all pigs oink, I oink, therefore I'm a pig. Only burp blue jays squawk, I squawk, therefore I'm a blue jay. No penguins make cheese, I don't make cheese, therefore I'm a penguin. Uh, only people from Iceland like iceberg lettuce, I don't like iceberg lettuce, therefore I'm not from Iceland. Things like that, right? There's a whole succession of those and see how he scores on them. As, on mass, on mass like 10 of them. So, uh... I'm hoping to maybe get him back and run those CI tests, but, but Rachel, what are your thoughts? I think the same as you. Um, 
there, like rewatching the premiere, there was just some like if you even look at the the two of you side by side, it's so different. Um, I think there is a possibility that maybe uh, selfish Effie, so Effie in the third, would kind of take over. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not inconsistent with an EHP to take over the the frame of whatever, okay? And it's not inconsistent with my explanation of a more, an older, more experienced in YouTube, a more experienced YouTuber ENTP uh, playing that more deferentially, at least in appearances, than a less experienced YouTuber ENTP. But it's also quite possible that it's, it seems like an ENFJ kind of a move, really. In fact, when I looked at that, that, when I watched that, I thought, did I just get ENFJ'd? Hmm. That's what I, I. So maybe you're onto something. But his SI was fine, though. I tested his yeah, SI. Yeah, his SI right was gate, good, actually. It was, it was like fourth slot, fifth slot SI, you know, like. He's able to to, tell, to turn his experiences into a lot of words. Now, it's possible he had planned that out, knowing how I ask SI mm -hmm. questions, but that seems unlikely because he told a lot of SI stuff, right? He told stories about his, his gang and his, and his growing up and his history and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. He did. So I think we can eliminate ENFJ. Yeah. I kept on thinking ENFP. I still think he's an ENFP who faked me out in the TI section. Because he didn't really get those first couple of questions right. He did get the genealogy one right right away. And the funny thing is, when I started to ask the question, I was planning on going to um, cousin. And I accidentally skipped person or went... I, yeah, I guess I skipped a person or something and went... Uh, I went to nephew. So when he said nephew, I, and it was so fast about it, and I realized that, oh, I, the way I put it, it is nephew. I, I skipped a person. The way I said it, actually, he's right, nephew. Made me sort of give him extra credit on the thing, even though from his end, it wasn't, it's like, well, you know, because I typically would ask cousin, so he didn't, he didn't memorize that or something. Because normally I would go to cousin, and so since I went to nephew, and he went to nephew so fast, I thought, yeah. But of course, with the genealogy questions, it's always possible to visualize your own family if you have those kind of family members around. Uh, now, if he doesn't have any sister and their ki and kid, uh, then obviously he wouldn't be able to visualize that. But if he, he does, since he does have a mom and a dad, like the first couple steps of it, he probably could visualize. So, I don't know. Or he could guess that and get lucky. It was just, I just didn't ask enough questions. So, I guess the basic gist of this video is the verdict among all parties who I generally respect their intuition on these matters, people in the chat and me, Rachel, our intuitions are still screaming, you're an ENFP, or at least not an ENFP, and that that TI that you walking me around the TI questions successfully is potentially a clue, a further clue that you're avoiding them. So hopefully we'll have a chance to just do a quick session, like ten minutes of me just hammering you with TI questions to verify or falsify this question once and for all. I'm embarrassed that I failed to do so in the hour and whatever we talked before. But on this upcoming time when we do this test, I'm going to be very businesslike about it. We're going to still just stay focused on the TI questions. won't be chit-chat or what whatnot. And we'll resolve the issue. If you are an HP, you will be able to get them almost all right or all right. And I'll ask a bunch of short ones, uh, short, easy ones. And if you are not an HP, you... Well, if you're an ENFP, you'll be, um, since the answers are 50-50, you'll be around 50-50, you know? 
because he guessing it half of them right. Anywho, that's the that's the uh, what do they call it? The pancake on the flapjack stack. <laughs> I like that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.